Right, you know when I said you, you're always changing things. Um, one of my videos I put the heater in the heater box under the belly of the van. If it was in that box just there, which was in there. Well, I've had a bit of a brainwave. So that heat has come out, and at the moment it's just boxed up. It'll be stuck in a corner, because um, we're not going to be using that heater. I bought two more heaters, both exactly the same. One is going to power the hybrid water heater from Bobble Vans and put heat into the vehicle. And the other one is going to heat the garage area and throw some heat into the shower room as well or vice versa so bottom line the garage will be heated the shower room is going to be heated hot water is going to be heated and the main part of the van is going to be heated the reason i've done that is so gives me a bit of versatility really um a bit more heat in the van because it's a big bus and i just want to make sure there's plenty of heat because we will be venturing out in some really really sort of rough weathers if i have my way and you're probably asking why i've taken that box out there is a really good reason, because in that box is going to be mounted my compressor, which is going to power the air horns on the vehicle, and maybe even try and use it to pump up tires. I don't know yet, we'll see, but that's what's going to go in this box. But the box is a bit of a mess. Let me show you. So you've got to have a hole back end, got the hole underneath, there's holes all over it. So I'm going to keep these little vent holes just here, a little bit of air in there. But what I want to do is take everything else off, patch the holes up, I'm going to weld them all shut, so repaint the box, give it a bit more life really, and um, from there we're going to f put some wood inside, fit the compressor into it, try and make it a bit more soundproof as well, make things a bit easier. But the compressor will be a lot easier to access if there's ever an issue with it. The compressor will be switched from inside the vehicle as well. So we can switch it on and off in case there's a leak and it just keeps on running. But we need to do a bit of refurbishment on this box. Right, what I've got to do now is get that box a really good clean up. Uh, clean it up. I'm going to weld some plates over these holes. And then we're going to give it another paint. Right, so today, now we've ground down all the welds on this, what we're going to do with the outside, a bit of hammerite. That's all we're using. Because at the end of the day, this doesn't need to look exactly pretty. This is going to be used underneath the bus. The bit that does need to look pretty is the front of the box. But as long as the rest of it is protect, protected from rust, all the salt, dirt that comes from underneath the vehicle, <coughs> this will last another God knows how many years. And the reason we're doing it outside is so we can get rid of some of the paint fumes, hopefully make it dry quicker. Because it is a beautiful day, people. Anyway, watching me paint is as bad as watching paint dry. So on that note, I'm going to crack on with this. Once it's painted, we'll come back to you once it's dried and we're installing it underneath the bus. See you shortly. Right, okay. As you can see, the compressor is now mounted on the board and we've demounted the actual motor from the top of the compressor because it won't fit in the box. Um, <clears throat> it's on rubber washers on there to stop vibrations. 
we've extended the wire to go up through the entrance of the bus and now we're going to put it in here so hopefully I'll get the camera in a position where you can see me getting it in there if I can't then I'll, I'll switch the video back on and then you can see it in place afterwards right so there you have it it is now in the box and in place I did try and film it but it didn't come out very well because I had to go underneath inside it and so the pipes are all kicked in up, the wires are all connected up and they're fed up through under the floor there and they go inside the bus. The pipes then travel up through the conduit which I built as part of the wall and go through to the roof to the air horns. Hopefully this should keep a noise minimum, noise to a minimum, inside the bus when the compressor's going. That's now secured in place as well and it's tidy. I like it. I like it a lot.
Right, although I've drilled the holes for this lock, or these, where these rib nuts are, one of the rib nuts has come out of alignment, which I did half expect because it's an awkward place where this lock's going on. There's a ridge at the bottom on this bar that holds the brush. But three out of four ain't bad, and it wasn't the easiest thing to do. So all I've got to do is get myself a file. And just elongate this hole downwards a little bit. I should be back shortly. Right, now we've elongated that hole just slightly. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to put that bolt in. So at least we know where we're going. And we know the other bolts fitted in place. One, two, three. That looks better. news and the last one Don't want to cross thread it. Still not quite enough. I'm going to do the bottom one as well. Give us a little bit of movement on those two. those holes up a little bit because they were all a bit, a bit of a tight fit. So final try should do it now. I'm very confident of it.
Right, all I've got to do now is put the little brass cover plate on the outside. Make it look nice. Move that out of the way. What we do to make it flow a bit easier. There you go. So now, one of the biggest things I was panicking about when it comes to this bus, because we're putting so much into it, was security. Now, if you ring up Mela coaches, RS buses, they'll just tell you about the box standard locks. Now, the box standard lock, if I can just show you, is a lock the other side of this. Let me show you. This lock here, which is absolutely knackered. I don't have the key for it. And to get to it and get all this down here, is a real, real ball lake. You have to be done inside and out. Do you know what? Not, it's not even so much about the amount of work to go in to change that lock. It was the price they wanted just for a little barrel lock. Um, and when I say it was a lot, it was a lot. I'm not even gonna go into it because it really, really ground me down. Just like a surround on a light. So a little plastic chrome looking surround for a rear light, it was like 150 quid. First time me about 60, 70, so they've gone up to about 90, 100, then it was 150, 160. I thought, Pff. anyway, I've worked around that. So, I've been bashing my brains about how I'm gonna put security locks and any type of locks, mainly on this door here, because it was gonna be the weakest point. I know this is not very strong um, here where it's actually, the bolt goes across to, but down here, I will be putting a thick steel plate. So it might be a case of I may have to remove the lock, put some washers behind it to bring it back out or put a plate behind it to bring it back out a little bit. But the main reason I've gone for these locks, they're gate locks, they're high security gate locks. Now, it was, I needed something that had a long throw bolt on it because of the rubber here. It was a thick old chunk of rubber which had to go past. And that was my only option, was these locks. But when I got them, oh, I was really really surprised. I mean, the high security keys that come with them. And um, yeah. And fitting it. I know I didn't go through the whole fitting instructions, but I'm gonna go do that now with you. So what I did with the lock was I drilled, I've got a hole saw because the hole saw seemed a bit big. I drilled out a piece of wood first. Um, tried two sizes. I tried that this one first, but it was too small. That one's a little bit big, but it, you know, it's worked a treat. And when I got the right hole size, I found the point on the door where I was going to put the lock. 
I do have a second lock and that will eventually go up here. Um, you might think it's a bit high, but it secures top and bottom of the door. And most of the time, when I'm with the van, and like if we're at a show and I lock it up, I lock the bottom one probably on its own maybe, it all depends. And, um, but having two locks, they're simple locks to fit. But I bought all sorts of locks to try and come up with some idea to make sure that I could secure that door fully. And that is the best option I've come up with. I thought about using electronic solenoid locks. I thought about using um, magnetic locks. The only problem is if your batteries go flat, you know, you've got a bit of an issue. And, you know, it, so it, it, it made sense to get a mechanical lock. And I like the little brass touch on the outside, actually. It does look quite good. But yeah, so, wasn't the easiest job to do. But there again, it wasn't the most difficult of jobs. But I've searched YouTube for people who put locks on doors like this, and you know, they're not out there. So, looks like I might be the first one to put some completely um, Frankenstein monster lock onto a bus. Um, if you're having the shows, you want to have a look at it. Um, just come say hello and come and have a nose. But the second one will be on there soon. So I've got two points of locking on that. The back door will be locked from outside and inside. So we've got two points of security for that. At the end of the day, there's enough windows in this thing in a big front windscreen. If someone's going to break into these motor homes and that, they're going to break into it. Um, all you can do is do your best to sort of deter them and that's what we're doing putting deterrence on and that is just going to be a first layer of security very first layer there's many many layers of security in this van um, and again how 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 much can you use to sort of stop people getting in touching your vans um, just keep yourself insured that's what I say anyway that's the first lock on. I'm well happy with that. Um, so it's on to the next thing. I'm back to working on the. What we're going to. Um, I tell you what we're going to be working on. We're going to be working on the board that goes in between the van. Uh, pass, sorry. We're going to be working on the board that goes between the driver's seat and the dinette. dinette. Do we call it a dinette? <laughs> 